Hey everybody, Phantom Shadow here, and welcome back to more Root Film. Let's continue. They peek at Kuramochi's mansion from a distance. Several officers are talking about something as they take down the police tape. Looks like the on-site investigation's over. Yep, once they're gone, we should be allowed in. They visit Yoshinaga Rice Store, and Yagamo gazes blankly at the carp pond once again. Suddenly, Yagamo gets an idea and calls up the store owner. Say, were you aware that Kuramochi's kept carp at his house? Oh, Kuramochi? Well, yeah. He's got a pretty nice pond at home. Does the pond use water from the nearby spring? Yes, the spring's connected here and there by aqueducts, so his pond draws that water. Phrase memorized. Pond draws water from the aqueduct. Yes, we do the same thing here. The owner points to the edge of the pond underneath the small stone bridge. There's a metal grating covering the opening that leads to the aqueduct. We draw water from the aqueduct and it flows over there. So that's why the pond water doesn't stagnate, huh? Exactly. If you walk from here to Hanko Yorokan, you can see the aqueduct run parallel to the road. Right, the aqueduct cuts in front of Kuramochi's, so that's where he draws the water from, huh? The Suwano Station area is quite relaxed now. Perhaps the Hoshii Festival is over. They look at the station building for a while but see no passengers coming or going. Sure it's quiet, but then again it's a weekday in June. When Yagamo makes eye contact with a tourist, she takes out her phone and bows her head. Understanding the gesture, Yagamo takes out her phone and a few pictures for her. Director, there's a, an accessory stall over there. Can we go check it out? Girls really have an eye for that, huh? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. Katoa cheerfully nods and dashes off. The others follow leisurely behind. Whoa. When they catch up with, with her, Katoa Ari cheering as she has several accessories in hand. Did you make these yourself? Yeah, like totally, dude. Each one's handmade and one of a kind, man. Please buy like whatever vibes you do. The mustache long-haired hippie of a salesman shows off his wares. Yagma watches Hatoa inspect each item. Magari tugs at his sleeve. Director, don't these match? Hmm? They match what Miss Kuramochi was wearing. Now that she mentions it, when it finally clicks, Yagamo hastily takes out the printed picture and shows it to the salesman. Sir, is this one of your wares? Hmm? Yeah, man, totally. This design was like my thing, half a year ago. So it's gotta be from back then. You remember who bought it? Sorry to be a bummer, but like, half a year ago is a long time ago. If I show him a photo of Miss Karamochi, it might jog his memory. But I can't show him a picture of her dead body, so what can I do? Seems like we could be back here sometime. Later. Huh? I met you the other day. Yagamo, right? When they head to Wash Washihara Hachimangu, some familiar faces call them out. It's the magazine editor, Tokima, and the brother of Saya Ito, who they saw yesterday in front of Kuramochi Mansion. Shooting material here today? Sure am. Let me introduce you. This is Saki Sakio Ito, my writer. I'm Ito. Unlike the down-to-earth Tokima, Ito doesn't seem all that sociable. 
Yagamo meekly responds to Ito's blunt introduction. I'm Director Max Yagamo. Sorry for your loss, Ito. You know me? Sorry, I saw you arguing with Kuramochi yesterday. From what I overheard, I figured you were Seiya Ito's older brother. <laughs> Boy, you saw that? How embarrassing. <coughs> well, please understand, his younger brother just passed away. It's only understandable that he's emotional. I know, it's totally understandable. I was shocked to see him so serious, but he's totally understandable. I met his younger brother once before. They're, t they're twins, so they look pretty much alike. Hmm. Sakio and Seiya are similar looking. Twins? Yeah, they got a similar face and figure, but different hair and general vibe. The younger one's much more serious. Must have been a shock, huh? Twins. I know twin si switching tricks are a staple of the mystery genre, but maybe I'm overthinking things. Uh, Ito? About what you told Kuramochi yesterday concerning his wife's infidelity. You heard that too? Well, you said it so loudly, so sorry. Well, whatever. Basically, Akari seduced my younger brother into committing suicide with her. So, she and your younger brother committed lover suicide? If dying in completely different places can be called that, then yes, I suppose. My brother and I were classmates with Akari back in high school. Sakio and Seiya were Kur Akari Kuramochi's classmates. Her brother loved Akari, but never confessed. After graduation, she went to Tokyo. When she came back, she married that geezer because of money. My brother felt bad for her ever since, and she dragged him into a lover's suicide. You sure she married because of money? Hey, it ain't his looks. He's like 20 years older, and he's old enough to be her dad. Plus, something must have happened to her in Tokyo. Akari came back with a bad burn scar on her neck. Old man Kuramochi took advantage of her in her time of weakness. I see. So that's what the mark on her neck was. Ito, on the day your brother died, were you... What do you want, my alibi? You're not even a detective. Sorry, I was just wondering when you got to Suwano. Ito fires silent at Yagamo's question. Noticing the tension between the two, Tokima cuts in. He was with me all afternoon, and that night... I can vouch for him. Is that so? Yes. Us two arrived in Suwano that afternoon, and then from then until about 6 p.m., we were at Taiko Dani Inari Shrine. We were interviewing the chief priest. You got a pretty de detailed memory. Well, we were interviewed by the police too. I remember since I had to explain over and over. I see. Ito aside, I don't think Tokima's lying. I guess we got perfect alibis, just like Kuramochi. Never thought I'd get caught in an incident like this when I came here to shoot material. I sent in the manuscript, but the editorial department was shocked when I told them. I can imagine. You gonna cover the incident too, now that you're here? Nah, no, we're just a travel magazine. Even if I shoot at anything, there's no space for it. Well, that makes sense. How long are you staying here? Who knows, the plan was to go home after we got enough material, but things happened. Besides, I got a hold of a funeral for my brother, so I'll be here for a while. Alright, seems like all we can do here. At the Taiko Dani <coughs> Inari Shrine Grounds, they find Shiva. She's leaning against the guardrail, looking down at the view below. Shiva, 
She twitches at the sound of her own name, but smiles and dashes over. You're here again today, huh? I was thinking you might be here too, Sheba. Did you need me for something? Yeah, I just wanted to ask you something about Miss Kuramochi. The missus, huh? Shiba's expression stiffens the moment she hears the mention of Kuramochi's wife. In an attempt to calm her down, Yagumo puts on the biggest smile he can. No, it's nothing too difficult. Just curious if she mailed letters to anyone. Mailed letters? Like physical paper letters? Yeah, not like email or line. I don't think so. Dr. Kuramochi has the only mail key and checks the, all the mail, so I doubt she had any personal letters. I see. Makes sense. Besides, there's no point writing letters when all we got are smartphones now these days. Well, the missus is banned from smartphone use, so I wouldn't say we've all got them. Huh. Miss Kermochi is banned from using a smartphone. Why? Ah. When Yagamo asks the question, Shiba puts her hand to her mouth. She must have realized that's a touchy subject. Shiba's smartphone ban seems a little odd in this day and age. Who exactly banned her for, from smartphone usage and why? Well, seems like it's not something she can talk about. Shiba's eyes wander. Not gonna talk that easily, huh? Well, in that case... Sorry, but it looks like I'll have to resort to emotional manipulation. Yagamo puts on a troubled face as if to curry sympathy from her. Shiba, we're in a bind here. The police told us that as witnesses we can't leave Sawano until the case is solved. Really? Yeah, we're going way over budget, set aside for food and lodging for location scouting. Raid right, Mangari? Huh? At this rate, our studio is going to run out of funds in two or three days, right? Magari blinks in confusion initially, but quickly catches on and plays along. Yeah, yeah, the expenses are just keep piling up. Our checks are gonna start bouncing. Our loans are piling up, we'll go bankrupt. The fundamentals of economy will deteriorate and trigger a global depression. We'll be jobless by next month. Is that bad? It's... Yes, it's that bad. And to prevent it, we gotta solve the case quick, so... Shiba, please tell us everything you know. Uh, okay, I'll talk. Yes, thank you, Shiba. So first, about the smartphone ban. Well, you see, Dr. Karamochi's been suspecting that his wife's been cheating. Hmm. About half a year ago, he confiscated her phone and banned her from going outside by herself. So I... So the reason he has on the only mail key is part of cutting her off from the outside, huh? Yes. He told me to keep an eye on her whenever she he's not at home. He also makes me entertain all the guests. Isn't that a form of domestic violence? Yagmo stops mid-sentence as he considers that Shiba respects Karamochi. Instead, he asked a more essential question. So, did she actually cheat on him? That, I don't know. But if he did go to such extremes, he must have had some reason to sp suspect her, right? I wouldn't go that far. About a year ago, she called over a man named Ito to tune her piano. The two seemed to really hit it off. He visited her several time other times, and one day, Kuramochi saw them together, and he got mad? Yeah. And by Ito, you mean Seiya? Yes. You see, that explains what we saw at Kuramochi's mansion yesterday. Miss Kuramochi's death and Seiya Ito's suicide could could be connected somehow. How else would they die on the same different, same day in different places? Yagmo places his hand on his chin in thought. As he does so, Shiba timidly speaks up. Is that all? Is what all? I told you everything I know. Can I go now? The police lockdown on the mansion is lifting today, so I'm going to ask if I can help. You are? Sure, you can go. Of course. Thanks to you, it seems our studio can survive. Thank you so much. Well, that's great to hear. In that case... She probably feels guilty about revealing the secrets of the household. Shiba walks away sadly. Hmm. 
That's so cruel. He locked her inside and confiscated her phone too? That poor woman. When she was out of sight, Hitoa finally breaks her silence, sounding mad. I agree. I agree, that's a form of domestic violence. Yeah, with a husband like that, it's no wonder she... Why'd she cheat, right? Hitoa, do you think she was cheating on him with, say, Ito? Probably, which is why I think those two... It's okay, just say what's on your mind. I think those two committed lover suicide. Lover suicide, huh? That would explain the note we found at her feet. The caged birds chose to die on the same day, so that they could meet together in death. The problem was how to communicate the day when she was cut off from the outside. I'm guessing it's probably something to do with the aqueduct that we just learned about. Like sending notes through uh, down the river or something. Well, that's simple. They'd fold up a note and yeet it over the fence. But then her husband might find it before her. And how would she respond? Toss it over the fence and hopes he pick it set up? Well, if we can solve that mystery, we can get closer to the truth. Let's look into it a bit more. Everyone nods as they leave Taiko Dani and Nari Shrine. They peek at the mansion from the street. The on-site in investigation seems almost complete. The police tape has been taken off the entrance, and only one or two officers are coming and going. Think we can go in now? Looks like it. Let's go see Kuramochi. When Studio Yagama passes through the gate, th some familiar faces stand in their way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you guys think you're doing, returning to the scene of the crime? Stop right there. Uh... These pigs are still here. Who are you calling pigs? My bad, my bad, I meant detectives. Snooping as usual with a camera, huh? You want us to confiscate your tapes again? Hang on. What we're filming now is unrelated to the case. You got no right to confiscate it. What? You're filming at a crime scene. The police tape's gone, which means it's no longer off limits, right? Which means the only one with a right to prohibit filming is the owner, Kuramochi. Besides, Kermochi is our guide. Is there a problem with us visiting him? Mm. After staring down Yagamo, Misawa realizes he got a point and gets out of the way. Studio Yagamo ignores the fact that Misawa is still glaring at them as they head into the entrance. But then Kishino calls out to them from behind. Hey, still need something? Yagamo turns around dubiously, but Keishino ignores him and steps to Hitoa. Hitoa freezes in place fearfully as the detectives approach. Can I help you? Um, you're Hitoa Amakata, right? Yes. Can I shake your hand? Huh? I've been a big fan since I saw your Grever pics. If that's all, sure. When Hitoa timidly holds out her hand, Keishino firmly grabs it. Thank you, I'm moved. This officer will keep supporting you. Thank you. Hitoa thanks Keishino with a professional customer service smile. Once her hand is finally free, Hitoa heads to the entrance with the others. The hell do you think you're doing in the middle of the investigation? Ow. Yagamo hears Misawa shouting at Kishina, whimpering behind them. Reception room, kitchen, Miss Kuramochi's room. Sitting in the reception room with Kuramochi is an unfamiliar person in a white coat. Sorry, you're entertaining a guest? Don't worry about it, he was about to leave. Just as Kuramochi said, the man puts on his shoes, gets off the sopa, and bids his farewell. Well then, I must be going. You too, thank you for coming. I'm sure Akari would be happy. Without another word, the man in the white coat bows to Studio Yagamo before he leaves. Who was that? That's Hatoya, a neighborhood doctor and Hikari's classmate in high school. He came here to 
light an incense stick. Is that so? Um, sorry about what happened. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry you got dragged into this mess. Besides, if it weren't for your quick actions, Shiba and I could have easily ended up dead too. So, thank you all. Don't mention it. Kuromochi would be mentally and physically drained, as even... Kuromochi must be mentally and physically drained, as even his words seem power powerless. Yagmo has a few words to say to him in that state, so he quickly excuses himself from the room. Shiba's in the kitchen, struggling with several trash bags. You cleaning up the trash? Yes, yesterday was garbage day, but I couldn't enter the mansion and toss these. Wish I could have gotten rid of all the raw garbage since it's hot this time of year. Due to the police blockade after the incident, the trash hasn't been taken out it seems. Just as Shiba said, the odor of raw garbage is wafting through the kitchen. What's that? Yagamo notices something out of place in one of the trash bags. What's wrong? This. Yagamo sticks his hand in the open trash bag and rummages around. What are you doing? Yagamo ignores the shocked women as he continues to rummage through. Eventually, he pulls out a small capsule. What's that? Capsule from a capsule toy? I think so. Look, there's more on the bottom. What's this, Shiba? I don't know, but I've seen them several times when cleaning up the trash can in her room. Were they a hobby of hers? I hear capsule toys are well made these days, so even adults collect them. Can't say I've seen anything like those in her room. These things are supposed to contain miniature character figures and stuff, right? Anyway... Yeah. Yagamo recalls the sight of the room when he found Karamochi's body. There wasn't the slightest hint of the childish commodities found in that room. So, why would she have these? Yagamo ponders over the capsule in hand. Hitoa peeks into his hand and speaks up. Director, does this look kind of off? Hmm? These holes look like they're plugged up with something. Yagamo looks at part of the capsule Hitoa is pointing at. There's small air holes on the bottom of the capsule, so it's easier to open. But the holes are filled with clear sealant. In a panic, Yagamo sticks his hand back into the bag. This one, and this one, and this one too. You're right, Hitoa. All the air holes have been plugged up. As he rolls several capsules in his hands, Yagamo thinks to himself at a loss for words. Everyone around him can only look at the capsules too baffled to come up with an answer. Hmm. If you look closely, all the trucks bags are open. Judging by the wrinkled plastic at the tops, it seems they're all tied and untied. Why were all these open? Right, listen to this. I tied all, all these to take out the trash, but the police opened them all up. So they rummaged through the trash during the investigation? Well, the police are gonna police. But the bugs are out in swarms this season. This is the worst. Capsule toy capsules were in the trash can in Miss Kuromochi's room, huh? Can't see a rich woman having such a childish hobby. Pretty big refrigerator. I thought it was just Mr. and, Kur Mr. and Mrs. Kuromochi here. Dr. Kuromochi brought a, bought a large refrigerator so his wife could stock up and reduce grocery trips. How considerate of him. I see. She seems to think that Karamochi brought, bought his wife a large refrigerator out of love, but you could also see it as him being overbearing, trying to reduce her opportunities to go outside. Or maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Shiva grumbles as she sorts through the garbage. What now? It's so hot and the next burnable trash day is the day after tomorrow. What do I do about the smell? Just hearing about it makes me shiver. What's more, I have to transfer these to the city, specified bags. I ought to complain to the police. Shiba grumbles as she sorts through. Alright. I think that's all we can do here. Alrighty. 
Leading the group, Yagamo takes a sudden turn, causing Magari to slam into his back. Ow. Don't just suddenly stop like that. Look at that. Yagamo points down the hall. Miss Kuromochi's room is still ta taped off, and there's an officer watching on guard. Looks like an on the on-site investigation isn't over. Typically, investigations start wide and narrow in scope and as work progresses. They must still see a need to investigate the most important room where the body was found. Anyway, they can't enter Miss Kuromochi's room as long as that officer is standing guard. Studio Yagama draws back from the hall as the officer stares at them. Kermochi sitting on the sofa, dumbfounded and not doing anything in particular. He's pensively rubbing his fingertips. Sorry, Kermochi. I want to you to look at something. What is it? Here. Yagumo rummaged through his pockets. He pulls out a magnified image of the necklace that Miss Kermochi was wearing. Hmm? Kermochi's eyebrows twitch dubiously. Does this look familiar? No, it doesn't. Is it somehow connected to my wife's death? Perhaps if it doesn't look familiar to you, that's fine. Hmm? Since the image is zoomed in, it appears he hadn't recognized the pattern of his wife's kimono. Disappointed, Kuromochi returns the picture to Yagamo. His fingertips seem slightly red and inflamed. Is that why he's rubbing his fingertips when he got I got into the room? Kuromochi, what happened to your fingers? I'm not sure why, but they've been red for a while. Maybe I got stung by bugs cleaning the garden. You were cleaning the garden? The cups trampled all over it, tossed white powder everywhere, and left without cleaning up. Yeah, that's what on-site investigations are like, apparently. Officers search drawers and scatter aluminum fingerprinting powder, causing quite a mess. But typically, the officers don't clean up leaving property owners to fend for themselves. Bothers me a bit, since I I should have had Hatoya take a look at it. Sorry, if, is it okay if I go visit his clinic? Sure, go ahead. If you need anything while I'm gone, I'm sure Shiba can help. Feel free to ask her. He leaves the room while rubbing his fingers concerned. Crap, forgot to ask for a picture of his wife. Who else would have one? Shiva stands in the kitchen catching her breath as she struggles with the trash bags. Maybe Shiva has a picture she took of Miss Kuromochi. With that in mind, Yagamo decides to ask. Say, Shiva, when did you take any photo- Did you happen to take any photos of uh, Miss Kuromochi while she was still alive? Yeah, I took a picture of her last year for a birthday celebration. That'd be a big help. Did you take it w with your phone? Yeah, want me to send it to you? Yes, I'd appreciate it. After a moment, Yagamo sends the notif- gets the notification that the photo was sent. Smiling in the photo is Shiba and Miss Karamochi posing in front of a cake. It was your birthday, huh? Yes, she remembered my birthday and celebrated it with me. She was a nice, wonderful wife. Shiba's eyes tear up. Yagamo turns away as he looks at the photo again. Never saw her when she was alive, but she was certainly beautiful. And she does indeed seem quite nice. In the back of his mind, Yagamo recalls the agony on her face when they found her body. Why must a gentle lady meet such a cruel end? The urge to find the truth burns within him as he puts away his phone. Yagamo doesn't know if he can call that justice, but he does know he has to do something. Sir, can you take a look at this picture? Yagamo shows the peddler a picture of Miss Karamochi on his phone. Hmm? 
We think that this woman is the one who brought that accessory we showed you earlier. Was it? Sorry, dude. I'm like, not really sure. An accessory... As the accessory peddler pretends to ponder, Yagamo clicks his tongue and turns to the girls. Toa, Megari, go pick out something you'd like. I'll pay. Really? You sure? I'm sure. Pick out whatever you'd like. Far out. Thanks, dude. Yagmo gets up to the smug peddler's face. Enough with your games, pal. That jogged your memory? Yeah, of course I remember. I mean, a Komodo beauty like her sticks out like a sore thumb as a customer here. So I definitely... So it was definitely the woman in this picture who bought the pendant? Actually, I guess it was less her buying it and more like it was bought for her. Bought for her? Was she with someone else? Yeah, a man around her age. They held hands. So I'm guessing... So I'm guessing she... He was her boyfriend or husband. Around her age? So it wasn't Kuramochi, huh? So it was Seiya Ito. What did the man look like? He was wearing a mask, so like, I don't know. Seemed pretty serious, at least. I see. Wish we had a way of finding out who she was with. If only we had a picture of Seiya Ito. As soon as he looks at Kanade, inspiration flashes in Yagama's mind. Kanade? Mm-hmm. Remember how we met Seiya Ito's brother, Sakio? At Washihara Hachimangu? You get his face on film? Could you pull up a clear shot of him? Mm-hmm. Kanai fiddles with a video camera as he finds the appropriate scene and hands it off. Sir, could you take a look at this? Did this man who is with the kimono lady look something like this? I don't know, dude. He got a pretty different vibe. That's his twin brother. His hair and vibe are probably different, but their faces should match. Hmm. Far out. If you had his hair, he's got the same eyes and nose. But his mouth is covered by a mask. But the eyes are, like, totally a match. Though his hair wasn't dyed, and he had, like, a more serious vibe to him. I see. So it appears that Miss Kuramochi and Seiya Ito did have a special relationship. And Miss Kuramochi was wearing the accessory Seiya Ito bought her when she died, meaning... Satisfied with her newfound evidence, Yagamo shakes the peddler's hand. Thanks for some helpful information. No biggie, man. Thank you for buying. So with that said, the lady's total comes out to 5,800 yen. That's a lot. Give me a formal receipt. Formal receipt? At an open stall? That's crazy talk, man. Gotta pay out of pocket for that, too. Yagamo tearfully takes out his wallet. Incidentally, 5,800 yen total. Itoa was 600 yen and Magari's was 5,200. Hmm. In that evening, Studio Yagmo heads to the inn as the streets of Sawano are dyed orange. Yagmo suddenly stops in his tracks up front. Hmm? What's wrong? I think I solved the mystery. Huh? Yes, that's it. The pond. The pond's the key. The pond? You mean at Kuramochi's place? Yes. Let's go to Kuramochi's mansion. We gotta experiment. Experiment? What do you mean? You'll see when we get there. Megari, Hatoa, I need your help. First. Yagamo leans in and whispers to the plan. Eventually everyone nods as they head over to Kuramochi's mansion. You guys again? You got anything better to do? Jeez, if you got no business here, then leave. We do have business, but not in the mansion. It's the garden pond. Huh? Yagamo... Misawa raises his eyebrows dubiously. Yagamo simply grins. Misawa, your officers have been diligently investigating these past few days, right? Miss Kuramochi's death and Seiya Ito's suicide are suspected to have some sort of connection, right? Hmm. Misawa doesn't confirm Yagamo's question. But the lack of denial is enough for, of a reaction to tell Yagamo that he's right. So, what did you need with the pond? Did some sort of key evidence sink? No, it didn't sink. It floated. Huh? Floated? In fact, it looks like they just finished preparing the, the experiment. Yagamo points towards the gate. They see Magari and Hatoa approaching. 
Director Max, we're just about finished. We'll we set it flo floating at the designated spot. Good, it shouldn't take much time now. Let's go check the pond. Okay, sure thing. They move to the pond and stare at the surface. The two detectives follow behind, confused. One minute, two minutes, nothing in particular, except maybe a carp surfacing. The moonlit garden is quiet, save for the occasional croaking. Hey, nothing's... Misawa turns around to Yagma and starts talking, but then... Suddenly, the pond starts rippling, and all the carp start stirring. What? What is that? Kishino points where all the carp are gathering. On closer inspecting, there's a floating capsule. The carp swarm it, perhaps mistaking it for food. I knew it. Go try picking that up. Masawa looks like he wants to say something, but he reaches for the capsule instead. Is that a sheet of paper inside? After shaking the water off the capsule, Masawa opens it and takes out the paper. Slowly unfolds it and... Made you look dumbass. Are you screwing with us? No, uh... Yagmo turns around and glares at Magari, who's sticking out her tongue before he continues. The content of the note aside, the experiment was a success. What? What do you mean? Many private ponds in Sawano draw spring water via aqueduct, like the famous Yoshinaga rice store. Thus, you can reliably deliver capsules to this pond via aqueduct from a certain point outside. So, have you retrieved anything like these capsules and papers from the two victims as evidence? Mm. Ah, at the scene of the crime. Yes, there was a note by Miss Kuromochi's feet, and the capsules are in the trash. Her overbearing husband confiscated her phone and banned her from going outside. This is the method they came up with to communicate in secret. Capsules floating to the pond get caught by the metal grating here, where they can be collected. Similarly, responses can be sent by removing the grating and allowing flow to the outside. Since Kuromochi has no interest in the carp and lets his wife do all the work tending to it, he, she probably had no worries of getting caught. I see. Hmm. I had several questions about how you know all that, but can't find any holes in your theory. Director. So, the person she's been exchanging letters with had to have been Seiya Ito and nobody else. Misawa. Miss Kuromochi and Ito estimated times of death were around the same time, right? Hmm. Masawa hesitates before he scratches his head and answers. Well, you helped us solve one mystery, so I guess we might as well tell you that much. You're right, they both died around the same time. 4 to 6 p.m. Investigations think that it was a prearranged lover's suicide. Not sure it counts since they were in different places, but that's the main theory. Thanks to you, we got evidence backing it up. Lover's suicide, huh? That sounds about right. All present fall silent. What breaks the silence is the voice of a man appearing behind them. I see, so that's what it was. Karamochi? When did he get here? He's likely been listening in on the discussion for quite some time. Karamochi walks unsteadily towards Yagamo. Yagamo, have I told you the significance of the Song of the Heron's Dance? Karamochi. It's the legend of Ken Gyu. That is, the story of Hiko Boshi and Orihime, or Altair and Vega. In order for the separated lovers to meet, the herons use their wings to form a bridge across the Heavenly River or the Milky Way. So the separated lovers were Akari and Seiya. They chose to die during the Hoshii Festival with such a cruel attention to detail, but I. I treasured Akari too, you know. So why did she and that man have to. Mm. At the pond side, Kuromochi falls to his knees and cries out loud, forgetting everyone else. His lamenting figure is reflected upon the now still waters of the pond in the moonlight. Yagamo Part 2, Chapter 4 
Somehow nostalgic sound can be faintly heard in a dream. Yagma sits up as if pulled by the sound, looks around the room in a daze. He's in a clean Japanese style room, unlike his normal room. Where am I? Right, we're staying at the inn in Sawano. After solving the letter mystery last night, they showed Kuromochi around and fell asleep. My head feels so heavy. Yagma scratches his head and looks out the window half asleep. He can still faintly hear the music from earlier. Is that... When he realizes what the music is, Yagama takes off his yukata and picks up his clothes. Stretch, stretch. Yagama heads, up, heads outside where, once he's changed. The entrance, he sees Hatoa moving her body to radio calisthenics. Good morning, director. Hatoa greets Yagama without missing a beat. Her well-proportioned figure shines as it moves in the morning sun. It's Hatoa, huh? But, uh, radio calisthenics now? What an odd child. Unaware of Yagamo's inner thoughts, Hatoa keeps on exercising. The sight of her moving makes Yagamo want to move too. Okay. Yagamo sit sits next to Hatoa and starts exercising with her. While Hatoa's moving easily, Yagamo's in pain due to his lack of exercise. My joints are crying. Is Yagamo his face twist in pain as he, from his joints. Hitoa speaks up. There's something that's been bugging me. What's that? The time of the Hoshii Festival. What about it? The what the detective said doesn't line up. Hmm. Yagma suddenly stops moving and looks at her. Hitoa stops too and looks back at him. Yesterday the detective told us the estimated time of death, right? Yeah, sometime between 4 and 6 p.m., right? Isn't that odd? What do you mean? When the Hoshi is dedicated to Yasaka, when was written on the scrap of paper, Yasaka Shrine's Hoshi dedication was at 3 p.m., so the times don't match at all. What? You're right, the times don't match. Right, even if the planes ch change for some reason, something's still off. How could they change the plans that suddenly, when they've been exchanging letters in secret? Yeah, the times don't match the letters, so how do they match each other? Katoa, the case hasn't been solved yet, has it? I don't think so. In the early morning sun, they si silently exchanged looks, feeling the chills even though it's summer. Meanwhile, the awfully cheer cheerful audio radio announcer continues the exercises. Seriously, the case hasn't been solved yet? Megari explains in exasperation. After his d discussion with the Toa, Yagmo calls for a meeting at the inn room. Well, that said, we'll keep investigating here for a bit longer. Sorry, but I asked for your cooperation. Well, no point in stopping now. Want to know the truth, too. But, Director, what about room and board expenses. You're not gonna withhold wages, are you? It's okay, I'll manage. Even, you can't even ma manage a straight face. Which is a little concerning, but okay. Kanade. Mm-hmm. Quiz time. Chinese delicacies include bear paws, shark fins, swallow nest, and the brains of... monkeys. Way to go, Kanade. Director, stop messing with him. Anyway, Hitoa, good job noticing the discrepancy between the time on the note and the times of death. You might be just be a natural as a mystery actress. Thanks, but it, it was just a coincidence. When I did my exercises, I had a sudden epiphany. When you did your radio calisthenics? As he nods in agreement, Yagamo said suddenly gets an idea in the back of his mind. Detective who gets epiphanies while exercising. That would be a perfect TV role for her. Now nah, that's just gonna give the wrong impression, no matter how you slice it. Something wrong? No, it's nothing. Nothing at all. Well, perfect, I guess. I found, my, found something a little interesting myself. Interesting? Is it a clue of some sort? Not just a clue. It could be the real culprit. 
Last night I checked all of Kanade's footage from location scouting and found it loud and clear. What was it? Way to go, Ayane. Ayane? What could it be? It's... A UFO. No reaction? Magari, can you say that one more time? Like I said, a UFO. It's on camera. What? Are you mocking me? Come on. Try telling the detectives you saw a UFO. They'll beat you up. I'm serious. It's flying clear as day. And what shape was this UFO? A cigar? An Adamski flying saucer? A Rush Rettlesham Forest Orb of Light? Or maybe a shapeshifter like the Air France 3532 incident? You really know your stuff. Well, no, it's too far away to tell its shape, even if you zoom in on it. Oh, sure, sure, then it's a bug or a bird. It happens a lot. No, just look and you'll see. It doesn't fly like either of those. Okay, show me later then. You don't believe me at all. After their discussion, they grab their things and get out. Okay, time for another day of investigation. Where do we go first? It's only... We've only been investigating Miss Kuromochi, so let's look into Seiya Ito's side of the story. We'll start with his house then? Yeah. Alright, I think we'll do that next time. So, uh, thanks for watching and see you guys then. Bye.